Yo guys, I'm yellow, still yellow, and today I figured that we should talk about the largest issues with Valve uh, as a company and as a game development kind of squad, because they do develop games... Game, blah, blah, blah. Yo guys, I'm still yellow, and today I figured that we should talk about some issues that I have with Valve as a company. I've been thinking about this for many, many years by now, but I figured that, you know what, maybe just l l let's make that video three years later, right? Maybe, maybe we should do that. As for the gameplays, these are from like 2019. I just had them laying around. If I have or have not used them, I don't care. I figured I should just do it now and get rid of them on the hard drive. And if you're wondering what is happening with this channel, you can take a look at one of my latest videos. I will explain most of the stuff in there. Um, so yeah, let's get deep and thick into this topic. Uh, and again, a side note, there's going to be uh, some smoke bugs in this replay. It's so annoying to watch. Hopefully Val will fix that eventually, but yeah, apparently not. So then, um, the biggest issues that I have with Valve is down to a lot of what they were doing with their leaders and whatnot. Yeah, sure, um, that might seem weird, but it's all really connected in a pretty weird sense. But to understand that, we need to recognize what Valve truly is and what they have done up until this point in time as a really huge platform for distributing, creating and having games and all that sort of stuff. So they've made a lot of games that have gotten very popular uh, across time and most of the games, if not all of them, are truthfully really polished pieces of work on their own, which is really good, even though not all of the games were created by Valve directly. So here's a general list, but there will be many more of these. We have initially some demo games that are, to me, rather unknown. Then we got the Half-Life game series, Half-Life 2, Half-Life Decay, um, all the Half-Life ports to consoles and whatnot. We also got the latest uh, Half-Life Alex, which uh, was for the for like the, the VR experience in general. Then we have the Team Fortress 2 games. We got uh, Day of Defeat. We got uh, a lot of the Counter-Strike games. Uh, we also got Counter-Strike Global Offensive, but they were created by Hidden Path Entertainment, by the way. Um, we also got Dota 2 uh, and the biggest joke on, on the earth, which is Artifact, that was an absolute dumpster fire, just insane. And then some other games that I can't really be bothered to mention because there are too many smaller ones as well. So with that entire huge catalog across the years, like where's the problem? Uh, well, first and foremost, the problem is actually hidden in plain sight, which is kind of annoying, but I will explain. And uh, as a side note, um, a lot of these sources come from either my anecdotes of playing the game and having watched uh, Valve ever since I was a young kid. So that's going to be a lot of years by now, an insane amount of years. And aside from that, there will also be uh, a gaming type of show that was called uh, All of Your History Are Belong to Us, where they talked about uh, Valve in, in general. Um, that will, it, it's like bought or like hosted on Rooster Teeth. So I recommend everybody to look at that series because it's insanely informative and it will explain a lot of old stuff that is really crucial to understanding Valve. And aside from that, there will also be a lot of really grimy but very um, up, up close anecdotes from Richard Lewis and also Duncan, uh, Duncan Thorin Shields, um, which have been, you know, on the uh, Valve's ass for a very long amount of time. So knowing all that sort of stuff, that's like the general sources for a lot of this stuff I've experienced. And, and that is why we are going to get in, into the nitty gritty now. So the way Valve mostly make games is that they don't. Rarely will they make a game from the ground up with their own people. Most of the time throughout the years, especially with all of the spin-offs of, of um, Half-Life and the Half-Life games and whatnot, they have actually hired other game dev teams and have had them do the work instead. And that have enabled them to, of course, push out even more games, like uh, Half-Life The Game, for example, uh, a lot of the ports for the consoles, uh, Blue Shift, for example, like a lot of these sorts of games, they weren't directly made by the primary team. Therefore, it speaks a lot to what capabilities their primary team truly, truthfully, truly had. Um, but it kind of gets better and worse. As far as I can remember, maybe my memory is off, but the Portal dudes, or the people, they, are also, they, are, they, they were also not directly from Valve. They were like a different kind of crew or team. Um, uh, half, uh, um, half, half, I meant to say, um, Left 4 Dead, I'm not completely sure of. But yeah, you can you already see that there is some sort of pattern here that is starting to become very transparent. And on that side note, by the way, you can take your ass that all of the people, or most of them, that were working on the VR type of games that they've made in recent years, they probably, most likely, also are not from the generation of like making Half-Life 1 and that sort of stuff. It's probably not. So, truthfully, like, a lot of weird-ass stuff is happening there. But yeah, that speaks a lot towards what Valve does with games and creating games. So then taking it even further, okay, so what are they doing with games now? 
they most likely manage them instead. And that speaks towards what kind of mentality they have and they want to push behind the games that they do get. For example, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, to, like, I, I believe initially at one point they didn't have skins. I might be wrong about that, but you can bet your ass that all the older ones did not. And I think that really came from like how some people used to mod that sort of stuff and have that in the Call of Duty games. So that idea eventually became more and more prevalent because microtransactions and all that sort of stuff. And also trying to add it in some sort of safe way that didn't d destroy the product. Because again, pay to win, everybody hate that. It's just horrible and really annoying and, and scummy and that sort of stuff. And it also destroys uh, the core competitive, competitive experience that people want to play in. Uh, that also goes for Team Fortress 2, by the way. Um, but also Dota 2, uh, obviously. Uh, but yeah, all in all, all across the board, you can probably understand now by all the information I've given you, even though there's way more to go through, that that has become Valve. So to me, truthfully then, it comes down to how Valve don't really have enough spine and or leaders in order to create a product or maintain products that will be true to the real kind of potential that the product was supposed to have. And I think Counter-Strike is the most grotesque absolutely most grotesque example of this with how it already had a lot of good standards relative to what it have right now which have all been butcher butchered and again uh, a few videos ago i posted about that sort of stuff aside from also the channel update and whatnot so uh, if you're interested in what is going on you can take a look there but yeah again a lot of things just butchered completely because they didn't respect what they truly had. They didn't respect the social experience they made and that they could just maintain. And instead they had to kind of destroy it, alter it in a wrong way. And yeah, it's, it's a pretty sad evolution that is uh, way past any of our, uh, our powers to, to put it that way. Um, so yeah, let's go through here and see other things that might be relevant to the topic. Yeah, so Valve's general kind of like, or rather, Gabe Newell's most likely type of master plan that he eventually put forth were to create a platform that just manage other games and their own games. It's easier to push updates. It's easier to distribute as the internet got better and more efficient at, at like just having a higher transfer speed and whatnot for people. Yeah, all across the board, you can, uh, yeah, you can imagine sitting in a, a like clutch hold of the entire market as a, like, the midway of New all of personal that sort of product, best. like tr transactional type of like business and whatnot, probably the best position anybody in business could ever hope to dream of existing. And so, uh, I mean, go figure. Uh, Game New will originally came from. Um, he came from Microsoft, so a shrewd businessman to to put it that way. But again, being able to follow it through and make it in towards some sort of platform that reached the the kind of reach that they have today. Uh, very impressive on its own, but as for the quality of the games that they have, it's been, uh, as far as I can tell, a complete disaster when you also take a look at the true reach that they could have had. So let's go back in time and imagine that you uh, you just booted up Counter-Strike because it started to get popular, just like me. And just like me, you were completely fed up with how really, really annoying and bad Battlefield started to become. Uh, along with Call of Duty as well. It played horribly, it was laggy, the competitive experience wasn't really there, or if it was there, it was kind of like half-baked. It always had a lot or many uh, like really buggy or annoying aspects to itself, like overpowered weapons that never really got addressed, bugs that never got addressed because you had to buy another game next year, regardless of how absolute potato the game was. And so go figure, when Call of Duty Ghosts came about, everybody just yeeted and they got off, they didn't want to play that sort of stuff anymore, and here we are. Counter-Strike got insanely popular, I think like it had like 5 or 8 million players uh, across like a month uh, at a one particular moment in time. Currently I'm not sure at all, but like 8 million different people, that's a lot of competition, and that is also a lot of attention on a game. So. How do you stagnate the growth when there's even more people that could enjoy the game towards an insanely high degree? I mean, the FPS genre is very basic. It's very easy for the human brain to understand what is going on. It's point and click, it's moving, it's trying not to get shot enough, and it's trying to survive, and it's also, That's in addition to that strike, it's about trying to being able to either defuse the bomb or not, uh, or even being able to eliminate everybody else or not. So, like, very basic premise. Almost anybody can get into it, but it's going to take more effort, of course, yeah, let's just butcher it by removing a lot of the things that make the game a lot more about teamwork and the people and also making it more about like just how you can grow together as people. Yeah, let's let's remove all that sort of stuff and make it so that it's going to be in the future a lot easier for the competition to get a good uh, foothold. All in all, Valve have really screwed up in that avenue. 
Again, I went even more in depth in that other video about the sort of stuff, but it really puts a sour taste in my mouth when you then see that they do to a larger extent the same sort of stuff with the other esport or or like popular games that they have. Uh, to some extent, Team Fortress 2, but that game is very different all across the board. Um, I guess Dota 2 has always been like this, and they've just continued having it like uh, that sort of way. But how they never change their ways because their leader type of people just don't understand anything. They have no idea what they're doing. They're just pushing more skins, pushing. Uh, half-baked tournaments they don't really set too much of a standard and they're constantly treating dota 2 like the the bigger better game rather than for example counter-strike in which counter-strike have like an insanely rich history so in truth these games are supposed to be treated as equals by valve but apparently they're not because valve is just like that hypocritical yeah really fun really nice great work valve i'm not really impressed whatsoever but again let's dive even deeper into Val valve uh, what valve blah, what valve got for them that is at least nice because they aren't completely bad, even though they do bad things. That's a no-brainer to me, by the way. Like, that should be very obvious. So they are, in essence, the best platform we got to distribute games. And getting updates for them, and maintaining them, and not losing them, and buying them, and whatnot. And that's aside from trading stuff if you ever want to. But that's not really a factor that should be counted for at all. Aside from that, they also have created some other products that are good. But it always seemed to be primarily in their own best interest. For example... The Steam Deck, Steam OS, um, they've also put a lot of money into AI to catch cheaters so that they can have, for example, Counter-Strike be a free-to-play game. Aside from Dota 2, I thought that that never really worked. Uh, for example, my Smurf account always get queued against and versus cheaters, but it's a completely legitimate account. So that is just absolutely pathetic, but who really cares? Um, aside from that also... Uh, yeah, they, they create a lot of other smaller things and they do host tournaments at all, That's which is better than uh, having nothing. Uh, so th good things are going for them, and that's also aside from being a very efficient uh, publisher for games, for other people. Uh, and also, by the way, aside from the green light system that allow people to create games and have that uh, being displayed and what, uh, all that sort of stuff, distributed and, uh, and that sort of stuff. So they are in general good for the ecosystem, but themselves, they have some serious flaws and I don't think they will ever address it. They're too corporate, they care too, care too much about money, they care too much about their artificial, absolutely inane, stupid statistics that ignore the human condition on a fundamentally loathsome level, and that is something that provokes a living hell out of me. <laughs> so yeah, no thanks Valve, if uh, like, yeah, it, it, you get really iffy. Let's say, hypothetically, you, have, you ever got to work for New them. What hell would I? Best. Why would I? I would just have constant, constant pushback from number assholes that would just destroy the games that you want to manage, right? So, yeah, I, at least now we know we got to deal with it, and it could be a lot worse. Like, it could be, I was going to say, Epic Games. <laughs> but anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, at least, and hopefully it was informative. Again, Rooster Teeth is a great uh, resource for the, all of your history are belong to us. Uh, if you want to support our channel, you guys know how. You're not stupid people. I believe in you. And yeah, uh, thanks for watching. This has been your Norwegian Hardcore PC Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time.